them biscuits a mile down the road. <laughs> you remember why you went into town? Yeah, yes, sir. What did I go to town for? The mail. Oh, yeah, the mail. Uh, oh, you got a letter here from uh, Judge Dean Benton Sylvester from Houston, Texas. You know him? Yeah, Dean's an old friend of mine. Yeah, listen to this. Dear Ben, two of my very dear friends will arrive in Virginia City on the 3rd of next month, where they plan to do some investing in land. The names are Phil Axe and Henry Morgan. These men are honest as the day is long, Ben, and I would take it as a personal favor if you would act as their sponsor and introduce them around your community. Dean Benton Sylvester. Oh, what do you know? Isn't this the... Isn't this the third of the month? It sure is, Pop. Huh? I'd better get into town and make some arrangements for them for a place to stay. Now, well, Pop, you ought to know the best place to stay. Where's that? Oh, well, Widow Hawkins. She takes in boarders, doesn't she, Pop? Yes, sir, and Paul, she sets the best table in town. She's the best cook I ever saw in my whole life. Except for Hawk Zane here. Yeah, she's very neat, too. Uh, the only person in Virginia City that changes her guest towels once a week. If you don't mind, gentlemen, I would prefer not to discuss Widow Hawkins. Now, wait a minute, Fauna. She's got the only decent place in town. You can't expect the judge's friends to stay anywhere else. Uh, I suppose you're right about her having the best place in town to board. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go in and talk to her. Oh. Adam, would you uh, care to come with me? Well, why, Paul? Protection? Uh, now, Pa doesn't need any protection against the widow. I spent a whole day with her last year at the June picnic. Had a wonderful time. I spent the whole day with her at the June picnic because I happened to draw her name out of a goldfish bowl in which were the names of 50 other ladies. I hear tell, Paul, around town that you sort of arranged that. Now, just one long minute. And you look at me when I talk to you. Yes, sir. I know that half the people of Virginia City are trying to get me married off to Widow Hawkins. Now, maybe I have to take their smirks and innuendos, but, but I don't have to take it from my own family. Do you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You coming along, Adam? I'm with you every step of the way, Pa. Right down the aisle. <laughs> Dear boy, how nice of you to come calling. Well, Clementine, it's very nice to see you. You, uh, you know my, my son, Adam. Oh, yes, I know all your sons, especially the big one, who looks like a pale grizzly bear. Oh, that's a uh, horse. Oh, yes, I remember him very well. Uh, but uh, then you have another son, um, oh, you... a tiny Tim, is it? Uh, no, Widow Hawkins, that's uh, little Joe. Oh, of course, little Joe. I have the most frightful time with knives. But do come in, and I'll brew you a nice cup of sassafras tea. Well, uh, Clementine, I, uh, actually, we really don't have that time. Now, to... Benjamin, that is not being very neighborly. 
For years I've been trying to show you the inside of my house, and now is the time. And I shall not take no for an answer. <laughs> We'll be jolly having your friends ensconced here as pieing guests. <laughs> oh, the tea will be ready. You know, there's only one thing missing from this room. What's that? A trapeze bar hanging from the ceiling. Benjamin, I see you've been admiring some of my posters. Yes, sir. My, I do miss the theatre so. You know, that was how I met my late departed. Oh, um, Mr. Hawkins. Cool. He was a fine gent he were. Thank you. A better husband no lady could ever wish for. Courteous to the extreme, generous to a fault, and all muscles. Oh, I do miss Harry so very much. You have no idea how lonely it gets living in this huge place without a man around the house. Oh, uh, Clementine, thank you very much for the tea. Oh, you... not at all. <laughs> and you visiting them, it'll give us a chance to catch up on our talk, Kim. Well, goodbye, ducky. Come again soon. <laughs> so, uh, see some town, I might as well tell Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Axe, and Mr. Morgan to come to Virginia City. All right, ducky. What was that again? Oh, I said we better not be late. Uh, Hop Singh is uh, serving stuffed duck for dinner. Yeah. You water these horses and meet me at the bank. Morning. Huh. Howdy, Smarter Sam. Oh, howdy, Pet. Now, that's a little crooked there, Sam. Yeah, how's the electioneering going? Fair at the middle. Give me another crack at the mayor's office, and I'll put every crook in Virginia City behind bars. And head of the reform ticket, that is my platform. What are you doing in town? Oh, I, uh, I came to see, uh, Clementine Hawkins. Oh. Sam, it was strictly business. Oh, sure, business. Yes, business. Now, it just so happens that there are two wealthy businessmen coming here to Virginia City to invest in land. And I'm fixing for them to board at Clementine's place. So you see, it was strictly business. Oh, Harry, I beg your pardon, Ben. I'm sorry, Harry. Listen, uh... A couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. I tell you, you're going in my office. I've got some business to attend to. I'll be back in about ten minutes. Harry, my business won't wait. Are you in that much of a hurry to get out of town? Yeah. Oh, very well. Bit... Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. I... Fifty acres of river bottom land. Fellow that owned it to let it go for taxes shouldn't cost us more than fifty cents an acre. Oh, excellent, Sam. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You think we should get about twenty-five dollars an acre for it? Well, now, Sam, let's not be greedy. Uh, let's ask uh, twenty dollars an acre, and <laughs> then we can settle for fifteen. <laughs>
You see, it's not only conveniently close to the town, but over yonder, just beyond those trees, there's a lovely creek that flows through the property. We call it Sunny Acres. Well, it's beautiful. Just be beautiful. And it appears to be exactly what we've been looking for. What price are you asking for? Well, sir, we've decided to let it go at a sacrifice. Uh, shall we say $20 an acre? Well, that sounds fair. And uh, equitable. We'll buy it. Now, uh, gentlemen, do you wish to pay for the land in money or by check? Oh, uh, by cash, of course. Yes, as uh, soon as we sell our nest egg. Nest egg? An emerald. One of the world's largest and most perfect. See, it's called the Burma Rarity, and by consolidating our cash gentlemen in this beautiful gem, we eliminate the hazard of carrying large sums of currency upon our persons. How much is it worth? Well, it's been appraised at $50,000. But we are so anxious to get our land project development started, we are willing to let it go at $25,000 cash. $25,000? Precisely. Well, gentlemen, uh, my bank... Uh, will be happy to uh, to purchase your gem. Of course, I'll have to have the approval of the board of directors, but that will require only a few days. It... Uh, gentlemen, if you were to ask Clementine Hawkins, I'd say this should go as first come, first serve. Do I understand that you want to buy the emerald? No. And wouldn't I be a foolish one to let pass such a quick profit? Where are you going to get the money? I have $15,000 cash, and I'll borrow the other ten. Mr. Jefferson, do you think your bank would mortgage my boarding house and the 125 acres beyond it for $10,000? Well, I, I suppose so. If, if I have to. Good, then I shall come down to your bank today and get the cash. Oh, um, but perhaps I ought to have this surprised first. Oh, a uh, very wise precaution, madame. Positively flawless. Magnificent stone. Allow me to read you this little card. <clears throat> the Burma Rarity, a replica of the famed Emerald of Burma. Lately, a part of the collection of J. Willoughby Smythe, San Francisco financier. Now, madam, we wish you to have this handsomely engraved little card absolutely free of charge, along with this genuine fake replica of the Burma Rarity. Now, madam, I would advise that you keep this replica on the table here under glass. Yes, we'll add to the decor of your room, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, of course, the, uh, the genuine jewel, you will keep locked in your safe. Oh. What do you estimate the value of this stone to be, Mr. Nigo? Oh, possibly as high as $50,000. Uh, certainly no less. Cool. Then I am to make a clear profit of $25,000. And my dear Benjamin made all this possible. <laughs> the Burma rarity and the imitation. Alike as two proverbial peas in a proverbial pod. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Gesundheit. <coughs> and uh, now, madam, shall we uh, complete the transaction? Oh, yes, of course. $25,000. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Oh, how clumsy of me. What happened? Oh, uh, the emerald. I've dropped the Burma Rarity. What happened? What happened here? I'll go oh. over there, Mr. Morgan, yeah, on your side. Her. I've got it. Uh. Oh, it's all right. Oh. Here you are, ma'am. The Burma Rarity. Uh. Oh, Mr. Nagel, I believe that will be all. I wish to thank you for your cooperation. Wish you good luck and good afternoon. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good day, ma'am. Good day. And uh, now, gentlemen, if you'd care to pay us for the property, that's uh, 750 acres at $20 an acre, exactly $15,000. Uh, <clears throat> well, Mr. Jefferson, uh, we just like to transact business this late in the day. Yes, if you'd be willing to come to our room the first thing in the morning with the deeds of the property, we'd be more than happy to transact the entire deal. Well, I'd hope to finish the transaction uh, at this Mr. time. Mr. Jefferson, uh, shall we say 7 in the morning? Oh, very well. Seven in the morning. Good day, gentlemen. Uh, oh, very well. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Coming, Mr. Rax. Uh, good day, Mrs. Hawkins. Good day. Smiling, Sam. Good day. Good day. Oh, you beautiful money maker. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Mr. Axe, do you realize this is the fifth time since the first of the year that we've sold the emerald? Yes, Mr. Morgan, I realize that. And do you realize 
that our total profit to date is exactly one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. By the way, who is scheduled to be our next uh, customer? Well, I believe uh, Ben Cartwright mentioned a rancher friend of his up in Oregon. Yes, and also remind me that I've got to order some more gla uh, <clears throat> emeralds. Oh, yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. Good morning, gentlemen. Widow Hawkins. Do Mrs. come Hawkins. in. We want to talk to Mr. Axe, Mr. Morgan. We have here the deeds and titles to Sunny Acres. Now, all we have to do is to get their signatures. And their money. It seems my erstwhile board has left bright and early this morning. Left this morning? Yes, but only for a few days, just to complete some unfinished business. They left a note, and they told me they would return in one week, at which time they will complete their business transaction with you. Return within the week. Mm -hmm. And in the interim, they want you to prepare Sunny Acres for a town site. Prepare Sunny Acres for a town site. What do they mean? Well, they request that you stake out individual lots on which they wish to build homes, and each lot is to be exactly one half acre in size. Each lot, one half acre in size. There are 750 acres. They want us to stake out 1,500 lots. Oh, dear. Precisely. And in case you don't know it, they borrowed your horse and wagon for necessary transportation. So far, this deal has cost us one wagon and two horses. Cool, gentlemen. Think of all the money you'll make. Now, Mrs. Hawkins is right, Sam. Well, we'd better get to it. We've certainly got our work cut out for us the next few days. Good day, Mrs. Hawkins. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. <sighs> some strays over on the other side of Virginia City. And you know that little old strip of land down there, kind of the creek bottom place? Yeah, I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. Well, I just saw Mr. Jefferson from the bank and that smiling Sam out there driving stakes in the ground and marking off lots. Oh, yeah. Well, those land promoters are going to buy about 750 acres from them. They're going to divide them up into building lots. For who? Fish? Paul, have you ever seen that land in the springtime? No, it's always nice and green in the summer. Yeah, well, it ought to be nice and green in the summer. It's under six foot of water in the spring. What? Yeah. Smiling Sam and his reform ticket. And he's going to put every crook in Virginia City in jail. So we better find Axe and Morgan in a hurry. Oh, I still got them strays to round up, Paul. You coming along with me, these human strays are more important. You mean they, they left early this morning? Right and early. I, um, I believe they'll be back in about a week. I think I overheard them say something about Reno. Now, now, look, Clementine, when they return, warn them they must buy no property until they've had a chance to talk to me. I shall tell the gentleman that very thing. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, why don't you and your son sit down and I'll get the tea thing. No, Clementine, uh, the horse and I are running out of It would only take off no, a moment. Really, really don't have Now, Benjamin, to... do sit down. <laughs> Let me help you with that, Clementine. Oh, thank you so much, Benjamin. Uh, Clementine, I I've got to explain something. That loud crash that you heard, 
The horse here... Yes, I know. Everyone wants to try the weights. That's the third table I've lost this month. <laughs> well, of course, I I'll replace the table for Now, you. here's a little dainty for all. I don't suppose your celestial chef op scene makes anything like that. No, ma'am, he, he sure don't. I could never understand about Chinese cookery. Sautéed kumquats and numbing birds, tongues under glass. Now, Clementine, this, this bauble. That wasn't here the last time I was here, was it? Bauble, indeed. You are referring to the Burma rarity. Burma rarity? Yes. Your charming friends, Mr. Axe and Mr. Morgan, sold it to me for $25,000. Of course, I had to mortgage the house to make up the rest of the money. But it's a good buy. And Mr. Nigel, the jeweler, estimates its value to be $50,000. Mr. Axe and Mr. Morgan sold you this for $25,000. They did. They, they took a $25,000 loss. They did. They went to Reno. They did. Clementine. I'm sorry to have put you to all this trouble, but really, Hoss and I have a great many things to do. Clementine, perhaps some other time. Hoss and I have those all those trays to look at. And I'm sorry about the table, but there are many things that we really should do. Do come back again, all. Thank you, ma'am. And you too, Ducky. Paul? What? Did she say Ducky? Come on, I gotta send a telegram. To who? Judge Sylvester. She did say ducky. They fleeced me of $25,000. Stop. Pretended to sell me a genuine emerald, but during the transaction, switched an imitation for the real gem. Stop. Catch the crooks. Stop. See that they're hanged. Stop. Immediately. Stop. Best regards, Dean Benton Sylvester. And in his letter, Judge Sylvester said that Axe and Morgan were honest as the day is long. Mm. Now, the days are getting shorter all the time. Well, obviously, Axe and Morgan forged that letter. Uh, poor Widow Hawkins. Morgan's their place just to buy that fake emerald. Now, boys, I, uh, I feel morally responsible for what's happened to, to Clementine Hawkins. I, I sponsored the crooks. I introduced them to her. And this is as much my problem as it is hers. Now, look, news of this must not get out to Virginia City. Well, why stall about her being swindled? They'll find out about it sooner or later anyway. Yeah, first let's find the crooks and get the money back for Clementine. Now, Adam, you stay here and take care of things. Hoss, little Joe, you come with me. Right, Tom. Hey, Paul. Paul! What? Wait a minute, listen. That telegraph feller told me that the Widow Hawkins had sent a telegram to an insurance man to come out and appraise that gym. What? Yeah, he's gonna be here at 8 o'clock on the stage. I forgot. Eight oh. It'll be 8 o'clock by the time we can get to Virginia City. Like we got here too late. What are we gonna do now? I don't know. No, I can't let that insurance man get a look at that hunk of glass. Stay here. Seems to be doing all right so far. Sure hope he doesn't try to kick it on the table. Yeah. Look, Joe, it's up to me and you. We got to get that fake emerald. You shoot the light out, and I'll jump through the window and grab it. Right. Now. Yes, I'll shoot them. The emerald, they got the emerald. I, they, they, they got clean away, Clementine. He left his hat. 
<laughs> Madam, I would suggest that you take this hat to the sheriff. It's a clue to the thief's identity. Oh, th th this is my hat. Hmm. Well, I still think that this should be reported to the sheriff. I, I think so, too, yes. Uh, when you recover the gem, madam, if you will write to me, I will return and make another appraisal. From what little I saw of it, it was a superb emerald. Well worth the $25,000 you paid for it. Well, you, you mean that was a, a genuine emerald? Oh, I'd stake my professional reputation on that, sir. I bid you good night. Ducky, did you perhaps think it was an imitation? Now, um, this hat that you claim is yours, bend down. Bend down, Ducky. I think we should sit down, the both of us, and have a nice, cosy chat. You just wait till I get my hands on those two. You just wait. How'd the widow take the news? How'd the widow take the news? When she discovered that, that those brothers of yours stole that emerald, she gave me an ultimatum. Uh, which is? She said that she would never turn her relatives over to a sheriff. Do you mean what I think you mean? <clears throat> she said that the whole incident would be forgotten if I... if I married her. She even had the gall to suggest she'd come over here to the house tomorrow and rearrange the furniture. Cool. Cool. I'm going after those two brothers of yours and you stick right here. A pa. I was wondering, uh, well, where do you think Clementina want the barbells? Over the fireplace? Or would Addie's tights look better up there? Punching a hole in my back all night, Joe. See him? Go get him! Run get him! That's a sick fight, I knew I'd find a good purpose for that thing. <laughs> hey! Hey! Come on! Come on! Come on, I'll go back to sleep. We gotta get those crooks before they get too far ahead of us. Oh, Dad, burn it. Joe, I'm so hungry I could eat a pack mule. Yeah. How come we didn't stop by the ranch house and pick up a sack full of grub before we left? Well, thanks a lot, pup. <laughs> hey. Hey, Joe. I smell grub cooking. You smell grub? You know what I think I do? Yeah. Hey, Joe. Hey, horse. Come on, we got some trade in it. Got him, trust me. Well, I'm having a hard time getting through to the chief. Look, chief. Chief, big medicine in piece of green glass. A cure, a cure warts and dandruff. Make your hair shiny. Eat big totem for chief. Here, here, Joe. Let me let me try some sign language. Uh, look here, chief. Am I to understand that you gentlemen wish to dispose of this bauble? Yeah. In exchange for food. Oh, that's what I sort of had in mind, yeah. 
Very well. There's mutton stew in the pot. Help yourselves. Hot dog. Thank you. Perhaps on the next stagecoach, there will be a tourist gullible enough to take this piece of glass off my hands at a small profit. Mr. Morgan, allow me. Oh, thank you, Mr. Axe. You know, when I think of those two petty crooks out there measuring lots and pounding stakes <laughs> into the ground, it warms the cockles of my heart. Mine too, Mr. Morgan. They were such rank amateurs, oh, you know. <laughs> Imagine not being able to tell the difference between a cheap piece of glass and a real emerald. <laughs> the Burma rarity. Uh, enough, Beauty. <laughs> uh, huh? What's the matter, Mr. Axe? I don't, I don't know, Mr. Morgan, but uh, it, it seems to have lost weight. Oh, oh my. Uh, one moment. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, this is a fake. What? No, oh, that is a fake. Try this oh, one. I see. Oh, a fake. This one? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, a fake. That one? Yeah, a fake. Mr. Rax, I'm afraid we goofed. We goofed, Mr. Morgan. You goofed. I goofed? Yes, you were supposed to pull the switch. Now, now, who pulled the switch on who? Now, enough of this soul-searching, Mr. Axe. I suggest we return to Virginia City and try to recoup our property. Post-haste. Or faster. We came for the real emerald. Uh, well, let's have it. The, uh, did you gentlemen say the, uh... You came for the real emerald? That's right. That's oh. right. The one you sold to the widow Hawkins and then stole back from her. Every time I think about the way you two crooks took that poor little widow woman, it makes me mad enough to bite a porcupine. Yeah, I'd sure like to see that. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Morgan, uh, I believe they have us dead to rights. Uh, <clears throat> if you'll permit me, sir. When I started on my career of swindling, Mother warned me that retribution would catch up with me someday. Would that I had taken her advice. Come on, give me that. That's the real one. Yeah, you can tell it's a real one just by looking at it, can't yeah. you? Yeah, we didn't have to get this back to the widow. To save our Paul's neck, I'd, I'd skin you two alive. Yeah, well, I sure wouldn't like to see that. Oh, uh, uh, young gentleman, uh, would you mind telling me uh, what you did with the, uh, the imitation emerald that we left with the widow? Uh, we traded it for grub. Well, uh -huh. Would you mind saying to whom? Yeah, a fellow named Chief Crazy Fox. Chief Crazy Fox. Chief Crazy Fox. I believe he's that noble redskin that's also in our profession. Yes, he runs that concession stand down there between here and Virginia City. Mr. Morgan, I'd suggest that we renew our acquaintance with that worthy post haste or faster. Right. He saw the buckboard go by. And the other two went by early this morning. Yeah, thank you very much, Chief. want for this? Me get them ten dollars. For you, make them five. How would you like to gamble it for five dollars? Gamble? Poker or dice? Aha! Neither one. There's a new game in the Westminster. It's called the shell game. And it is played very simply with one, two, 
three little shells and one very small little pea. Now, the object of the game, sir, is to tell me under which shell the pea lies. Now, watch very closely, because if you can tell me, you win. Hey! Glad I caught up with you two highwaymen. <laughs> Let's have a look at this thing. Is this the emerald you stole from Clementine Hawkins? Oh, no, you know that one was a fake. This is a real thing. We caught the two crooks in Reno and got it back from them. Boys, the one you stole was the real thing. This is another one of the imitations. Huh? Yeah. Are you sure, Pop? I'm positive. Just a minute. What did you do with the one that you so shrewdly stole from the widow? The one which is the real Burma rarity. Speak up. We traded for some grub. For some grub? That Bernie Paul, we are starving. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it back, Paul. What? Uh, come on. Uh, you say you gave it to this uh, girl. Yeah, which way she go? Yeah, it's imperative that we find out. Yeah. Imperative. Hmm, in times of stress such as this, my memory sometimes fails me. Yeah, I figured that. Would a ten dollar bill help you to remember? It all comes back to me now. <laughs> she was on the stagecoach bound for Virginia City. Virginia, that Virginia way. City. Oh. As to which way she went, in times of stress, such as this, my memory sometimes fails me. Would a ten-dollar bill help relieve the stress? Virginia City. You take this street and you check the registry at the hotel. Hoss, right. take this street as far as you can go. If you find any girl that fits the description, you let me know immediately. I'll be around here somewhere. Yes, sir. Come on, get going. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. 
though you weren't watching very closely. Is such a lovely watch. Is there something else you no, care to wager? No, thanks. Wait? Let uh, somebody else win the money. Good afternoon, sir. Would you care to wager one small silver dollar to prove that the hand is not quicker than the eye? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I think I, I would like to wager that. Very good, sir. Now watch the pea under the shell. Gentlemen, watch the pea and watch the shells. Watch me moving quickly about the table and tell me where the pea is. Uh, under the middle one. I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, that that uh, gem that you're wearing interests me. Would you, uh, would you care to wager, say, five dollars against that? As you like, sir. Again, watch the pea under the shell. We move the shells around. Now, under which shell does the pea lie? I'll say, uh, under the middle one again. Must be under the middle one. <laughs> Obviously, you've played this game before, sir, because the P is under the middle shell. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you forgot your five dollars. Oh, honey, you keep that. But it's just a chunk of glass. I know. But such nice glass. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you again, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you'll kindly hand over the Burma rarity. Yeah, hurry up. Well, you mean you, you want... I guess if you... If you want the Burma rarity, I guess I'll... I'll just have to give it to you. This one's a fake, another fake, another, and another. They're all fakes. Ah, now this is the one I examined the other day, the genuine emerald. And what a beauty it is. Uh, madame, uh, would it be amiss if I presumed to ask you a question? Uh, could it have been possible that... Oh, no. Uh, what Mr. Morgan is trying to say, madame, is how could a sweet little old lady like oh, you... Oh, my day. Look here, you two crooks. I knew you were crooks from the very beginning. Your modus operandi, I gave you away. You see, Mr. Morgan, what did I tell you? Yeah, but look at him, Mr. Axe. Who would ever have suspected that... Gentlemen, many years ago, when I was in the theater, I was billed as a female prestidigitator. I knew you were planning the switcheroo, exchanging the real emerald for the fake. So I just... Hush! Pull the switcheroo first. Hmm. Mrs. Hawkins? How do you do? Well, sir, mighty glad to see you back. Mighty glad. We've got the 1,500 lots staked out for you. And now you're ready to complete the deal. Gentlemen, I'm afraid that Mr. Morgan and I must leave town again. Leave town? Where are you going this time? I'm escorting him to San Francisco, Mayor. But we've gone to a lot of work preparing Sunny Acres as a town site. When will you get back to Virginia City? We'll take over Sunny Acres. About 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Clementine, you're an amazing woman. Absolutely amazing. 
Oh, Benjamin, our gallant. And in front of all these people. I just knew when we had our little talk yesterday that you and I would see eye to eye. Now, Clementine, we, uh, we did get the, get the emerald back for you, didn't we? Yes, but I... And uh, we did have some sort of an agreement. You mean? Mm hmm Cool. I won the war and lost the peace. Well, as we say in the theatre, there's always another booking for a good act. <laughs> 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 An amazing woman. You sure it's patient? It's been over ten years. It's changed a lot, but it's him. Had a guitar slung over his back? Yep. He stopped out in front of Cassie's store. Just looking in. fellas ain't deputies here. I'm the deputy. I'll handle this. Bet you never thought you'd have to handle a killer when Sheriff Coffey went off and left you in charge. Roy was here. He'd run that gunsling out of town. Well, the sheriff ain't here. I'm in charge. Now, none of those posters say Ed Payson's wanted anywhere. So we're gonna handle this nice and peaceful and quiet. Sure, Stu. We're your friends. We just want to help you out. Well, I don't want nobody starting no shooting match, understand? see what's keeping Pa. Oh, good day. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. I'd like some flour and uh, coffee and a side of bacon. Sure. Would five pounds of flour be enough? That'll do fine. I haven't seen you around here before. Are you new in town? No, ma'am. Not exactly. I'll get the bacon for you. Adam. Tell that overgrown brother of yours this is the last of the peaches. Till the new shipment comes in, he better start working up an appetite for rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him, Will. Here's the bacon. Now, how much coffee would you like? Oh, five pounds ought to do it. You. Yo, it's me. I thought you were dead. Lord knows I prayed for it. Well, look, that was a long time ago. And I'm sorry. Get out of here. How much does that come to? You're not buying anything here, you murdering devil. I said get out of here. Pa, who is he? What's he done? This is Ed Payson. The man who murdered your brother.
harder. I was faster, that's all. Well, let's see how fast you are now. I will. I just put it down. I can take care of this. Billy, get his gun. Careful, Sally. He ain't wearing one. Uh, where is it? In my saddle roll. Oh, what's the idea? I quit wearing it. There's no law against that, is it? Well, what do you want here, Payson? Nothing that ain't mine. My daddy left me the ranch when he died, and I figured to come back and settle on it. You mean you came back here to stay? Well, why not? Not much of a life being on a drift all the time. Well, uh, I guess if a man owns a piece of land here, he has a right to live on it. Okay, Hill. You mean you're letting him stay? Now simmer down, Will. This man's a murderer. He ought to be hanged. If Roy were here, he... I don't need Sheriff Coffee to tell me anything. Now, you all know when a man kills another man in a gunfight, it's self-defense. It's the law. You know that. What kind of law is it that lets a wild animal roam the streets? I'm not a wild animal, Mr. Cass. You give me a better name for someone who's killed 12 human beings. Or was it 20? No. Six. You almost sound sorry about it. Well, I'm not too thrilled about it, son. Well, it's too bad that don't bring them back. Yeah. And it's too bad I can't make them rest any easier in their graves. I'm floating around like a ghost from place to place till I die. But I can't. He's got a point there, Stu. All right. But you better keep your nose clean. And if there's any trouble, I don't care where it starts, I'm going to hold you responsible. I told you I put up my gun. Well, you see that it stays put up. Now, we have a clean, peaceful town here. Yeah, no. That's one of the things I like about it. Thank you, anyway, miss. He's lucky I didn't kill him. Now, Will, I, I know how you feel. But don't let it eat you up. And you keep staying away from him. You say hello to your pa, Adam. Sally. See you a little later. Nerve of that gunslinger. After what he did, coming in here trying to buy food from me. Man's got to eat, Will. He don't and he won't. I'll see to it. Nobody in town sells him anything. But, Pa, if you do that, what's he going to do? That's his worry. Put these on my bill, Sally. Throw in a bag of sugar while you're at it, huh? What's the idea? Making a few extra purchases. Why? Because I feel like it. You're buying them for him, aren't you? Look, once I pay for something, I have a right to do what I want to with it. Then these ain't for sale. Well, now, wait a minute. Are you saying you're not going to sell them to me? Not if you're going to turn around and give them to him. You can unload my buckboard. Now, if you don't want the trade of the Ponderosa, there are two other stores in town. Be glad to get it. Now, Adam, that ain't fair. I've supplied now, the Ponderosa. Now, don't talk fair to me, Will. I just heard you threaten to starve a man out. Now, you name it. Either I buy what I want or I don't buy anything. Billy's order. Adam, you got no call mixing in this. Do you think you're doing the right thing? I don't know, Sal.
you're one of the Cartwright boys, aren't you? Adam. Yeah, I thought I recognized you in the store. What's the matter, the deputy remember something else he wanted to warn me about? Uh, no, I uh, just brought you a little grub. You look like you weren't having too much luck buying it yourself. Does Cass know about this? The uh, Ponderosa is a pretty good customer of his. Well, how much do I owe you? Oh, uh, half a dollar ought to cover it. You really got your work cut out for you. You wouldn't think a house could run down so bad in three years. It's three years in August. Well, the barn's in fair shape. Be surprised how much sprucing up you can do with a hammer and saw. Maybe. Once I get used to using them again. What's the matter? You uh, a lot of practice? Well, when a man hires your gun, he doesn't expect any other kind of work out of you. I thank you for the grub. Yeah. What time you got here? Paul, before you fly off the handle, maybe you ought to hear what he's got to say. I intend to. Had a visit a little while ago from Will Cass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way you say that, I guess you've got some idea what brought him out here. Paul, let me tell you what happened. I just want you to tell me one thing. Did you threaten to take away our business from him if he didn't sell food to that killer that rode into town today? Pa, in the first place. I don't care about the first place, the second place, or any other place. All I want is a straight answer from you. Did you or didn't you? Well, yeah. I can't believe it. Well, Pa, will you let me finish? Do you know how many years we've been trading with Will Cass? One of the most generous men that God ever made. Do you don't realize that the first winter we were here, he carried us? Carried us for five full months till we got on our feet? Yes, I know. And this is the thanks he gets. You taking the side of the very man who killed his son. And what's got into you? I don't know. I... Well, I don't know. I just got mad. I mean... All right. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. I'll write in tomorrow and I'll apologize. I really didn't mean that about taking our business away from him. It, it's not mine to take away. Yeah. Well, let's sit down and eat before everything turns to ice. Amen. Yeah, it hasn't already. Sally, I thought I might stop in after supper tonight. Not tonight, Billy. Do you mind? What's the matter? Pa's in an awful temper. He's so mad he can hardly talk. Well, I, I guess he's got a right to be. I suppose so. But all my life I've been hearing about Ed Payson, the man who killed my brother in a gunfight. I, I thought he'd have horns growing out of his head. Instead, he wasn't even armed. Yeah. Funny, wasn't it? I guess without his gun on, there really ain't much to him. Maybe there could be, if people gave him a chance. I've got a lock up, Billy. You sure you won't change your mind about tonight? I'd better not. Good night. Good night. Where are you going, Adam? Well, take a little ride, that's all. This time of night? It's just as good a time as any. You're still thinking about that pacing fella, aren't you? Yeah, I guess I am at that. You know, I must have heard a dozen different stories about that shooting between him and that cast boy. Sure would like to know which one of them's right. Yeah, so would I. I won't be long.
takes a gun's hand He becomes like a scourge on the land Whether wrong, whether right He knows that he must fight Soon will die Everyone Morning, boys. Morning, boys. Morning, boys. Where'd Adam go? Finished breakfast and left. His horse is still outside? Yeah, he took the wagon, Pa. Where'd he go? Well, he took some scrap lumber and some tools over to Ed Payson's place. Payson's? Yes, sir. I reckon that place does need fixing up a little bit. Cartwright? Yeah. I, uh, I've been studying on something I can't figure out. Yeah, what's that? Why you're doing this. Well, no particular reason, just, uh, being neighborly. Heard you playing last night. I was out taking the air after supper. Why didn't you come on in? Oh, I don't know. I... Guess I wasn't sure if I was welcome. Yeah, this, uh, this is an old friend. I first started playing this to keep my fingers nimble for shooting. Did it help? How do you mean? The shooting. Oh, no. Well, I don't know, maybe. A little bit. Most of the time, there wasn't any shooting to do. I was working for an old boy over in Oklahoma Territory. This is some years ago. A white-haired fellow, about 60. Looked like a bishop. He ran that whole town. Cattle, gambling, uh, you name it. I was on his payroll, well, it was over eight months. The only time I ever took out my gun was to clean it. Well, sounds like a soft job. <clears throat> Why'd you leave? Well, there was this girl in town that uh, I was seeing. And the young feller that she used to go with decided that uh, he wanted her back. I guess he figured that killing me was the easiest way to do it. So, uh, he walked down to my hotel one night and called me out. James L. Barlow. He was 22. And among his surviving male relatives was a father, three brothers, and more cousins than you could count. They come gunning for you? All at once. At least they were fixing to when I left town. 
against those kind of odds, man might as well put a rope around his neck and jump off a chair. Save everybody a lot of trouble. Well, what about the girl? Well, stacked up alongside all those cousins, she just naturally lost out. Well, say that, uh, that girl over at the grocery store yesterday, that uh, Cass's daughter. Uh, Sally. <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw her, she was all buck teeth and pigtails. Oh, no, they sure can't fool you. Yeah, they sure can. Young Billy Buckley thinks a lot of her. Yeah. Yeah, I can see where he would. Yeah, they all grow up fast. They do indeed. to do this. He's getting off easy. Easy? That piece of land is all he has left in the world. Well, Sally, we're not going to talk any more about it. I told you I've made up my mind. All right. But will you tell me something? And don't get mad? I won't get mad. You say Ed Payson murdered Dave. That's what it was. Then why wasn't he tried for murder? Because no one would testify against him. Why? They were afraid. Mr. Cass, that lawyer's waiting for you down at the sheriff's office. Was just leaving. Pa, did you see the shoot? I know what happened. But did you see it? Sally, your brother wouldn't start a fight. He wasn't a troublemaker, honey, don't you remember? He's full of fun, played jokes, made people laugh. But sometimes his jokes weren't so funny. You remember how he used to like to tease people, too. You've been mourning Dave for so long, you've almost forgotten he was human. That's the one thing I can't forget. He was human and now he's dead. So how do you expect me to stop hating the man who did it? By forgiving him. Till he walked in here yesterday, I almost thought I had. But it won't work, Sally. I'll hate that man as long as I live. figured out a way to get rid of Ed Payson. He's down at the sheriff's office. Get rid of him? There's a 12-year-old tax lien on his property. Pa's gonna pay it up and have Cahill throw him off. How much does Payson owe? Almost $800. Where are you going, Cartwright? Any place I please, any objections? What's going on around here? You didn't have to tell him. You don't know pacing anything. It says right here in the statute book, Cahill, when the taxes on a piece of property are this far in arrears, anyone who comes forward and pays them off is legally entitled to take possession of the land. And as Cass's attorney, I've so advised him. Now, you sure you want to go through with this, Will? You better get over to the land office, Mr. Cass. I got a feeling Adam Cartwright's trying to beat you there. Adam Cartwright? Sally told him what you were going to do. He headed for the bank. some pop. How do you want the tax receipt made out? To the owner of the land, Edward Payson. Ain't that the gunfighter who rode in yesterday? 
Yeah, that's the gunfighter that rode in yesterday. Any more questions? You're going to be sorry you did this, Adam. Not near as sorry as I'd be if I didn't. I dropped by your store to apologize about yesterday, and I do. But I don't apologize for anything I've done today. I don't know what to say. It's gonna be a long time before I can pay you back. Well, there's no hurry, you're not going anywhere. No, I, <laughs> I guess not, thanks to you. Ah. Uh, I got something I'd like to give you for security. Well, you don't have to do that. I want you to keep my gun for me. Now, you're the first fella I've met in a long time that hasn't uh, treated me like a rattlesnake. I figure if I haven't got this, I can't use it. So maybe I'll stay out of trouble, at least long enough so you can get paid. Anything wrong? I, uh... I wonder if you'd tell me something. You name it. Was it a fair fight between you and Dave Cass? Oh, well, if, if you'd asked me right afterwards, I'd have said yes. But I'm not so sure anymore. Why not? One fellow's bound to have some kind of edge, you know that. Either he's not quite as scared or as mad or as drunk as the other one. Or maybe he's just quicker. Dave and I had been drinking that night, and the next thing I knew, we were out in the alley, shooting at one another. And then it was all over. I got the idea there's no such thing as a fair gunfight. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. A lot of faith in this man, don't you? Well, it's not just a question of faith, Pa. I, I don't claim to know him that well, but he admits he's led a pretty useless life up till now, and he wants to change. And I think he deserves the right to try. Mm. Can't argue with that. Just that a man of his sort kind of breeds violence just by being around. Wouldn't want you caught in the middle. I won't be. So don't worry. All right. Let's get there. There won't be any trouble. Sally's gone home. Did you make it up with her? Funny the way she seemed to stick up for him, wasn't it? There is something so evil about a man that can turn members of a family against each other. It's just like it was ten years ago and everything's happening all over again. First I lose a son and now my little girl thinks... You and Sally should get married, Billy. Well, you think she and that gunfighter... <laughs> well, she hardly knows him. She knows him. Maybe it's too late already. Good night, Billy.
Well, hello, Miss Sally. You're a long way from home, aren't you? I was just passing. I've been out to visit my Aunt Caroline. Oh, I see. Well, that's a very fetching bonnet you've got on there. Thank you. Uh, you'll have to pardon the way I look. Uh, Adam's got me tied at the stove today. I'm making biscuits. Oh, you've got the place fixed up real nice. Well, thank you. How's everything at your house? Oh, not so bad. Uh... We got company. So I see. How you been, Sally? Fine, thank you, Adam. What'd you find out? Well, there's no question about it. Harvey's got some good breeding stock, but I think he's asking too much. Hold on for a while. He'll come down in price. All right, you're the doctor. Sally, will you stay to dinner with us? I don't know if I should. Well, it's gonna be a good fee. You got chicken, sweet potatoes, and uh, like I say, the biscuits. Uh-oh. Oh, <clears throat> Well, I guess we'll have to do without the biscuits. I'll make another batch. It won't take a minute. Well, if you're sure you don't mind, Miss Sally. Oh, I don't mind. And you don't have to keep calling me Miss Sally. I'm not that much older than you are. How are the mighty fallen? I was riding in my wagon down the road, my true love for to see. When out of the woods jumped a big brown bear, bow wow, says he. Not now, says me. I'll keep riding in my wagon down the road. I'll keep a rowing out to sea. I'll keep a walking on my feet until I find the only one for me. I was rowing on the ocean on a raft, my true love for to see. When up from the deep jumped a flying fish, fly high, says he, not I, says me. I'll keep riding in the wagon down the road. I'll keep a rowing out to sea. I'll keep a walking on my feet until I find the only one for me. My own true love, my own true love, the only one for me. Oh, I think I could listen to you all day. But it's late and Pa will be upset. I really enjoyed your singing very much. Well, that makes us even. I really enjoyed your biscuits. <laughs> Next time you're in town, drop in and say hello. I mean it. Sally, I didn't mean to kill Dave any more than he meant to kill me. We were just hot headed kids. I know. What do you make of that? Well, if you don't know, <clears throat> I'll never be able to explain it to you. Everybody's got the same idea we have. Uh, things get pretty busy here come Saturday. Everybody getting ready for a big night. Uh, I believe I'll step over and say hello to Sally. Ed, do you think it's a good idea? Well, Billy Buckley doesn't own her. No, but he'd like to. Who wouldn't? Don't worry, you got my gun. business. Boomin. Come on in. Pa's not here. Hey, 
Ed Payson just went into your store. Let me handle it. How? In my own way. This doesn't make any sense. And you know it. I don't care. I don't care about anything else. Mason! Do you hear me? I'm calling you out. You know why. Ed, you mustn't go. Not much else I can do. But you're not even armed. He knows that. How about it, Payson? You coming out or do I have to come in after you? Ed, please, let me talk to him. This is on my account. Yeah, yeah that'll look grand, wouldn't it? Billy, Cahill isn't gonna like this. Stu, well, the big lawman's out chasing chicken thieves. Yeah, but I stay out of this. Well? I'm sorry I can't oblige you, son. Still not wearing a gun, eh? Nope. Well, we can fix that. Jamie, lend him yours. Go on. Pick it up and put it on. No, thanks. You're yellow, mister. You're yellow clean through. You wouldn't take that if you were a man. No, I wouldn't if you were. With you, son. Well, I got one with you, mister. If you're looking for a fight, all right, come on. It's no business of yours, Adam. It is now. And I am wearing a gun. Come on. No, Billy. I don't want any killing. You mean you don't want me killed, isn't that, Ed Will? Not one of the Cartwrights, because that'd make an awful mess of things. But it's different with Ed Payson there, isn't it, huh? He killed my son. Because your boy was trying to kill him. Can't you get that through your head? No, that's not true. That's the way it was. I'm not going to let you talk that way about Dave. Dave was a, a fine, good son. gonna do? Get it over with. Give me a gun.
about Ed. You don't have to. I know enough about him. Billy, please. Please listen to me. It's not his fault. Billy! Billy, come back! hard, don't you, son? I was figuring, since you don't want to fight, maybe you'd still have sense enough to run. Pack up. You're free to take whatever you can carry. Kind of lets out the house and barn, doesn't it? Get going. You're the one who's going to get going, Billy. Don't push me anymore, Adam. You'll never get pushed any harder. Adam, I told you before, this ain't your fight. He's right, Adam. Don't be a fool, Ed. He's trying to goad you into something you don't want to do. So you want to do it for me? First in town and now here. I don't want a wet nurse, Adam. Don't you understand, Ed? You lose either way. You kill him, it'll be just like the rest. You'll keep drifting for the rest of your life. Just another ghost. You got the whole world in your hands here. Don't drop it now. Move out, Adam. It's too late for talk. Billy, I don't mind a man fighting his own grudge, but you're doing Cass's work, and you're gonna have to finish it through me. No, Cass is not the reason he's here. Sally and his son. Oh, it's me he's after, and he's right. Because I want her, too. You don't have to fight him. You've got her. Not as long as I'm alive, you don't. As long as you're alive. Or I'm alive. That's always what it comes down to, isn't it? That's the way it's gonna have to be, mister. All right, Adam, you heard it. I'm gonna kill him or he's gonna kill me, and that's the difference that there is between being Ed Payson and Adam Cartwright. All right, son, let's get at it. That's what I've been waiting to hear. I'm sorry, Adam. It was bound to happen one time or another. And if not him, it would have been somebody else. Thank you. 
You just had to do it, didn't you? You had to push him into it. And that makes you a better man, doesn't it? He was faster, that's all. What's bring the two Cartwright boys to town? Old Nosy himself. But he can't ride in or out of town without your long nose starting to itch. Nothing wrong taking an interest in your neighbor. Ah, uh, I always was one to keep to my own affairs. But old Jeb here, he's sort of been bit by the curiosity bug. He's wondering what brung you fellas to town. Well. I reckon I can tell you two fellas. Yeah. See them two horses down there? They brought us. <laughs> you just had to get nosy, didn't you? Ah! Ah! Hey. Come on, Joe. This paperwork's gonna take us an hour. Right, wait a second. I don't see the stage come in. Uh, the idea of sitting in that musty old office all day kind of makes my stomach flutter, you know? Yeah, I know what makes your stomach flutter. I've seen her, too. Come on here. Hey, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Pa said you were going to take care of all that paperwork and stuff. Why don't you just hold down the fort? I'll be back in a minute. Uh, Ma'am, we, uh, we kind of pride ourselves on our hospitality here in Virginia City. That's why we always have a gentleman meet the young ladies at the stage. Where is he? Well, my dear, we'd best check into the hotel. Where is he? There they go. Uh, room? 
Yeah, my, uh, two rooms, as a matter of fact. Uh, one for myself and one for my niece. Uh, where does your sheriff generally hang out this time of day? Well, if you're avoiding him, stay off Main Street. If you're looking for him, his office is down the street a piece. Rooms 10 and 11. Hmm, can't exactly make out your name here. Uh, is it, uh... Cranston? Yeah, that's my name, all right. Uh, Homer T. Cranston. Reminds me of a refreshing breeze right off from the prairie. And you two remind me of a gale from the barn. Now, if you don't mind. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was trying to avoid us. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? Not to two nice fellows like us. <laughs> now, listen, you two back pasture Romeos. Out of my way. Can't a lady walk in this town without being bothered by two low-down, miserable, fat-brained, lop-eared cows? Lop-eared? Yeah, it's lop-eared. You don't play games, man. Right? No, I don't play games. Well, I'll make up the rules. Here. Polly, get him. I'll get him. Call me Jennifer, oh. Mr. Uh... Well, thank you, ma'am. My, my name's Cartwright, but you can just call me Hoss. Hoss? <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to see why you named that, because uh, you're stronger than a whole team of Parcherons at Sunup. <laughs> yes, sir, you got muscles stronger than a mule. Oh. While you're at it, Hoss, why don't you show her your teeth? Uh, allow me to present myself again, Miss Joe Cartwright, at your service. Cartwright? Well, that's your name. A sad but true, uh, blood is thicker than water. He's my older brother. Much older. Now, look here, Joe. And that disgraceful incident I just witnessed. Street brawling. Street brawling? Joe, them two liquored up bums is trying to bother Miss... Miss Jennifer. Now, you stop teasing your brother, Joseph. It was just wonderful the way he came to my rescue. Why, he's the strongest man I've ever met. Well, well now that you've seen his talents, how would you like to see a little more refined part of Virginia City, say, uh, luncheon at Garson's restaurant? Sure. 
Why, I'm hungrier than a parcel of poke heads for a spring thaw. Uh, I mean, I would be delighted to have luncheon with you. If, uh, Hoss will accompany us. Oh, ma'am, I'd, I'd be happy to. Now, uh, Hoss, did you get all that paperwork finished? Yeah, burn it. I gotta get that done, too. Maybe I'll join you later, ma'am. Please do. Yes, ma'am. And uh, don't you hurry now, Hoss. Because uh, haste makes waste. Thank you again. Yes, ma'am. Hey, let, let me tell you about the ranch I run. We, we call it the Ponderosa. How's it going, Rocky? Not too good, little Joe. Somebody go stiff me up something awful. I can't ride no more. I uh, was sort of wondering if, uh, well... Uh... Sure. There you go, Rocky. Bless you, lad. Howdy. And you run the Ponderosa all by yourself. Oh, well, of course, Horace helped me with a few routine matters. Of course, then there's Pa and Adam. That's my older brother. Hey, they have a few minor chores to take care of, but I, I do take most of the burden myself. Hey, well, that's enough about me. What, what brings you to Virginia City? Well, I came with my Uncle Gideon. He's in the investment business over to Placerville. He had some sort of a deal here, so I twisted his arm to take me along. <laughs> hey, they got sauerkraut and hog knuckles. Morning. Sorry. Thank you. Wow, that feed had popped the corset stays on a school arm. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I mean the... Uh... The luncheon was delightful. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the cuisine. No, I, I had the hog knuckles. Oh. Hey, uh, look. Why don't we, uh, why don't we go down to the livery stable? I'll rent a buggy, go for a little ride, and I'll show you the countryside. Ah, uh, well, that would be very nice, but uh, don't you think we'd better wait here for Hoss? Oh, no, no, I, I think he's gonna be tied up for a long time. Oh, oh. So I'll just pay the check, and we'll be on our way. <laughs> What's the matter? My wallet's gone. It's funny, I had it went outside when I gave Rocky that money. I was careful to put it back in my pocket. I haven't been close to anybody. Except you, Jennifer, honey. That was a pretty funny joke. You had me worried for a minute. Let me have it back so I can pay the check. I didn't take your old wallet. Well, look, a joke's a joke. Come on, give me it back. Let me tell you something, Mr. Cartwheel. Cartwright. I am not the kind of a girl that goes around lifting men's wallets, even for a joke. But if you didn't do it for a joke, you must have done it for real. And if you don't give it back, I'm going to take it back. You call yourself a gentleman. Why, you mealy mouth, addle headed mangy renegade cousin to a second low boat! All right, that's about enough. All right, Miss Pocket Pick and Flinch, I'm taking you to the sheriff. Oh, office. no, you're not! Oh, oh, yes, I am. Have you seen that? That was You And you want to sit down to the general store at the other end of the street. <laughs> There's been more doing here this morning than I see in three weeks at the animal. <laughs> Sir. She's nothing but a sneaking pickpocket. You search her, she's got my wallet. Wallet. What this, this jackal says is a dirty lie, Sheriff. I never touched his moth eating no wallet. And if you touch me, I'll scratch your eyes out. Now you simmer down, the both of you. Little Joe, I've known you a long time. And if you say that this little lady stole your pocketbook, then I got to believe that you think you're telling the truth. On the other hand, while she's a total stranger, she don't have the look of no pickpocket. Spunky, yeah, but. I went some looking, little thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's all part of her bait, Sheriff. Sure. Yeah, to, to, to go an innocent man like myself and, and to let my guard down so she can stick her hands in my pockets. Now, you search her. She's got my wallet on her. You just go ahead and try, Sheriff, and you'll end up with a mouth full of Sheriff's badge. We've got to start being more careful, Sheriff Coffee. This town's beginning to get all kind of riffraff and sneak thieves. I caught this here hombre red-handed. 
As a matter of fact, I caught him with his hand in my pocket. Low-down pickpocket. Here, I found these on him. He's had a busy morning. Wait a minute. Come on. The ugly old thing, Sheriff, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, that wallet belongs to Mr. Cartwheel. Cartwright. Oh. Miss, Miss Jennifer, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. You bet your sweet life you don't know what to say. You've said enough already. May I go now, Sheriff? You may. That is for the hog knuckles and sauerkraut. Good day, Sheriff. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but my name, sir, is Gideon Flinch. Now, I take it that you're the sheriff? I am. Oh, excuse me. Roy Coffey's a name. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, why, yes. Uh, may I speak with you privately, sheriff? Yeah, uh, excuse me, boys. Uh, you see, sheriff, now I'm being pursued by a madman. Here, uh, just you read this. Yeah. Get in French General Livery, Placeville, California. I'll meet you in the bank. What's this? I will break every bone in your body, oh. horsewhip you, oh. and then shoot you. Oh. Signed by uh, Mr. Burke. Now, who's he? Yeah, uh, William Burke. Uh, they call him Bullethead Burke. Bullethead Burke. Yeah, you see, I run a small investment house over in Placerville, Sheriff. Now, this Burke entrusted me with $5,000 for speculative investment. Well, naturally, I do the best I can for my clients, but I can't be right all the time. Well, of course not. And this $5,000, Mr. Burks, that's been wiped out? Unfortunately, yes. A except for my commission, of course. Well, of course, a man can't lose his own commission. Uh, well, somehow this Burke got the idea that I cheated him. Now, where in the world did he ever get that idea? Oh, well, you've got to help me. He might be riding into Virginia City right this minute. Now, you just calm down and give me his description, and I'll keep an eye peeled for him. I can't describe him. He did all his business with me by mail. Uh, but I've heard he's big, strong, and mean. Now, if you can't describe him, ain't nothing I can do for you. Oh. Say, friend. Uh... Me? Kind of light. Well, uh... Well, where's your smoke? Well, I figure if you don't mind lighting me, you wouldn't mind supplying the stogie. <laughs> Uh, they stole the... Uh, May I have my key, please? Good afternoon, Miss Cranston. Uh, hello. Uh, I I'm afraid you've got my name mixed up. It isn't Cranston, it's Flinch. Flinch? I, I don't think I understand. Your uncle registered you in as Miss Hepzibah Cranston. Hepzibah? Let me see that. Hepzibah, indeed! Hepzibah. Oh! Really, Uncle Gideon? Uh, I thought it was kind of a nice name. Do I look like a Hepzibah? Well, I'm not going to look like your Uncle Gideon if Bullethead Burke catches up with me, which he'll probably do now that you made the clerk put my right name down on the hotel register. Well, I didn't know, Uncle. I thought you were here on business, not running away from a man. Well, I didn't want you to worry, my dear. But... The die is cast. I, I'm trapped and no way out. 
Oh, maybe you're just imagining it. Maybe he isn't chasing you at all. Well, I didn't conjure this up. No, sir. You just take a look at that. Oh, if I were only young and strong, I'd stand up to this Burke and whip him. Of course you would. But I'm not young and strong. Uncle, do you remember on the stage this morning we passed that old deserted cabin about three miles from here? Well, I noticed a shack by the river. That's the one. Now, look, you sneak out the back way, I'll buy some grub and rent a buggy and take you out there. No, no, it won't work. Burke would just find out I've been here and track me down like a dog. But, but I thought you said he'd never seen you. Well, that won't stop him. Uh, no, Jennifer, I've heard stories about this, Burke. Well, I understand he can lick any two ordinary men. And, and I'm not even ordinary. <laughs> I'm not going to have my favorite uncle get beaten up. You are going to hide out in that cabin. Only Burke, when he gets here, isn't going to come looking for you because he's going to find somebody here whom he'll think is you. But I don't understand. I mean, you can't find someone who's willing to take my place and get beaten up. To get beaten up? No. <laughs> to take your place? Yes. If I can trick him into it. I think I can. Hi, Rocky. Did you lose your smoke? Yeah, not only that, lumbago stimmed me up something terrible. I can't ride no more. Also, I kind of hate to do this, but, uh, no. well, uh... Here, here, Rocky. Thank you. No, miss. Thank you. Well, I still don't like this idea, not one bit. Oh, well, it's better than being horsewhipped and beaten and every bone busted in your body. Now, I've got a little plan worked out. And unless I'm losing my touch... Come on, horse! get over the way that you handled those two men that were bothering me this morning. Oh, they is, they is kind of puny, Miss Jenny. <laughs> Anyhow, they need the bed. <laughs> uh, I'll just bet that there aren't two men anywhere could take you. Oh, sure there is, Miss Jenny. Somewhere. No, no, Hoss. You're the kind of a man that a girl feels safe with. You know, that a, that a girl can depend on. Oh, yeah, you can depend on me, Miss Jenny. Anything you want, you just ask me, here. Oh, 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 no, no, Hoss. You, you've done more than enough, more than enough. Uh, uh, of course, there is one small favor that I'd like to ask of you. Why, sure, ma'am. Well, you know, my Uncle Gideon has been uh, tired and exhausted from the trip and all. He doesn't feel up to uh, showing an out-of-town client a good time. So, so I, I was just wondering if you... Uh, uh, Miss Jenny, I... I ain't much at good timing with a stranger. I... Oh, 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 Hoss, you'd be wonderful. A and there's no problem, because this client, Mr. Burke, he's a, he's never seen my uncle. Uh, Miss Jenny, I, I don't know. I... Oh, it's simple, Hoss. All this Mr. Burke will want is maybe a, a free dinner and a few drinks. Why, I have a hunch that after he sees you, he'll only stay for a minute or two. Uh, that burn, Miss Jenny, them, them big business deals, I'm... I'm about as clumsy as a one-legged spider. But, you know, if you if you really want me to, I... Oh, Hoss, I, I really want you to. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 let me get this straight, Hoss. Now, Jennifer wants you to just play act the part of drunk. So, uh, have a little talk with this Mr. Burke, maybe buy him a drink. That's right. I'm on my way up there right now, Joe, to meet him. In fact, yeah, since I'm going to be here all evening, there ain't no use in you hanging around. You might as well just ride on back out the ranch. No, no, I, I better stay with you, Hoss. Maybe give you some help. Oh, no, you don't. In fact, Joe, you done had your chance with gentlemen. 
you ride on back out to Ponderosa and tell Paul I ain't gonna be there for something. Bye, little brother. <laughs> You want me? I do if you're Miss Flinch. I am. Well, this here fellow from the stage office gave me a nickel to ask you to come down there right away, please. Said there was some sort of mix-up with your ticket. Honest to Pete, these, these ticket offices. All right. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You gotta go. What sort of trouble, boy? Fire! It's burning like a can of coal oil. Here, you tell this lady in here what happened. Here. Sammy, now here's that the nickel I promised you. Nickel? What are you, some kind of a crook or something? He what? wins a game, he gets another week off. What'd you make that move for? What did I make the move? You told me to make the move. You're so smart. You go ahead, you play yourself. Go on. All right, I will. Come on, set him up. You're going to lose me so many games, this fellow's going to get out of here and I won't have nobody to play with but you. I'll show you how this game should be played. Yeah. yeah. I suppose you invented it. Over here. Come on, one more. All right, now, which did you choose? The clock is faster than you are with them handcuffs on. All right, you go first. <laughs> Touch us. Well, it's awful nice you fellas come all the way in Chicago just to help me out. <laughs> the boss said there's nothing too good for Bullethead Burke. Do you really think the pigeon's here, Bullethead? Well, there hadn't been a stage out of town since he arrived. And this is the only hotel. Boy, I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. Now, you fellows go in the alley and back, just in case Mr. Flinch tries to make a break for it out the back way. Now, easy and quiet. Don't cause no commotion. Bullethead, do you think this is the first time we pulled an out-of-town job? Sorry, boys. Forgot where you were from. Choose. Over here.
If you lose this game, he gets out today. You already lost me seven games. You there? That's why you're a deputy. Come on, I'll let you out. Doggone you, here, flea bit and biscuit binders. What a pleasant surprise. What have you done with Hoss? What are you doing here? You, you... Don't, don't, no, 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 no names, Jennifer. Now, you call me enough names to last me for a whole year. I just wanted an opportunity to tell you how dead wrong I was. Well, you'll be plain dead if you don't get out of here. Oh, well, don't, don't stand that draft. I'll bet that you had something to do with sending me on that wild goose chase to the stage office, too. Mm, sort of. Yeah. Oh, and I sent Hoss back to the Ponderosa. Oh, no! Oh, honey, look, all's fair in love and war. Ah, this isn't exactly war, is it? Oh, oh, come on, don't be like that. I'll be like what I want to be like. Uh, excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for a man. I can't describe him, but he goes by the name of Gideon Flinch. Of course, room 10. You mean he's here, using his own name? Now, when he checked in, he called himself Homer T. Cranston. I may look pretty stupid, but not much slips by me. Yeah, room 10, huh? Thanks. Now, look, you wanted Hoss to be Gideon Flinch, so now I'll be Gideon Flinch. You can't be Gideon Flinch. Why can't I? And now, look, I, I know Hoss has got the muscles and the brawn, but uh, I just feel that I have the ability to make a much better impression on Mr. Burke. Hey, I might be Mr. Burke. <laughs> no. Oh, Jennifer, will you stop worrying? Look, I just want a chance to show you I'm sorry, that's all. I'll be the best little old Gideon Flint you ever saw. I promise. I'll make a good impression on Mr. Burke if it kills me. You Gideon Flinch. Oh, yes, you must be Mr. Burke. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> so you're the one that cheated me out of my $5,000, huh? You know, I kind of thought you'd be an older man. But I'm glad you're not. I'd hate to beat up on an old man. <gasps> well, Bullethead was right. The little pigeon did try to sneak out the back way. Yeah, you're gonna go along quietly, Flint? <laughs> Flint? Oh, you made a mistake, a terrible mistake. My name is Jake, Jake the Weasel. Come on, don't give us that. Jake the Weasel's doing time in Detroit. Oh, th that must be another Jake the Weasel. You say you're Jake the Weasel, we say you're Gideon Flinch. You calling his liar? Let's just oh, take uh, a look here and see what we can find. The... Well, now, this wallet's got all kinds of cards with the name Gideon Flinch. This watch, there's a name engraved on it. Gideon Flinch. I, I, I found it, but my name's Jake. Jake the Weasel. No. <laughs> you know, you're, you're lying to us and you're hurt our feelings. You know, we're sort of sensitive about that. You know, we may even end up massaging your throat. Like I said, Flinch, nobody cheats Bullethead Burke out of $5,000 and gets away with it. Oh, but I'm not going to work you over here. Me and my boys are going to take you for a little ride out in the country and do the job real proper-like. You see, Mr. Burke, there's, there's, there's been a nasty mistake. Oh, you're so right. And you made it when you cheated me out of my money. No, no, no. hold it, Mr. Burke. No, I, I didn't cheat you out of... Oh. I, I, I didn't cheat you out of anything. See, the fa fact of the matter is I, I, I'm not even Gideon Flinch. <laughs> sure, sure. You're in Flinch's hotel room. And you try the old oil on me just as big as brass. Well, it won't work, Flinch. Uh, J Jennifer, you... You own up and, and tell... Tell Mr. Burke here who I really am. Yeah, you do that, honey. You taught me never to tell a lie, Uncle Gideon. Uncle Gideon... Oh, 
Hey, now, look, this is, this is just a plan she's got to protect her uncle. Now, I, I, never, I never cheated you out of anything. See, the, the fact is, my name is Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. You got something on you to prove? You're this here, uh, what do you call it, cartwheel? C -c 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 Cartwright, C -c Cartwright. Oh, sure, sure, I got, I got a lot of proof. I got a... I, I, ha I had the, the proof, and I, I left my wallet in the sheriff's office. Of course you did. Everybody leaves their wallets with the sheriff. <laughs> now, Mr. Gideon Flinch, unless you want to test my shooting at five feet, you better stand real quiet while I tie up the little lady here. We don't want her running after the law after we're gone now, do we? Huh. Oh. Jennifer, will you please tell Mr. Burke who I really am? Wonder what's keeping Burke. He must know by now the pigeon ain't in the hotel. We've got him. But, but, but fellas, I tell you, I'm Jake the Weasel. Are you boys down there? Yeah, Bullethead, we're here. Good, now stand by. I'm coming down the ladder. And I'm bringing this no-good, low-down skunk of a Gideon Flinch with me. You've got him. Then who have we got? Like I've been telling you, fellas, my name's Jake the Weasel. fighting the fire. Hmm? What fire? The only thing burning around here is Pa. I beat him three games straight. Paul, you you didn't send a little boy in about, about that high to get me. You've been out in the sun too long. I have warned him about you and that loco weed. That dead burned little Joe. I should have known it. I'm going to kill him. Hmm? Paul, it's like this. This pretty little gal came into town on the stage today and little Joe took her to lunch. Only, only she picked his pocket. The, the fact is, he, he just thought she picked his pocket. She wanted me to be Gideon Flinch because her uncle wasn't feeling too good. He was there in town. And he didn't feel like meeting Mr. I'll explain it all later, Paul. I'm going to kill that little Joe. Yeah. Uh, maybe we better find out what to Yeah, it's your move. Okay, hold it up right here. Come on, boys, this is the end of the ride. This thing don't drive like the ones we use in Chicago. Now well, we gotta decide which one of these two hombres is the real Gideon Flint. Like I keep telling you, I'm Jake the Weasel. Shut up! One thing's for sure, one of you's lying. Well, Mr. Burke, why don't you just ask somebody who lives around here and they'll tell you who I am. Got an idea, Bullethead. Why don't we take care of the both of them? <laughs> That's right, uh, the boss said nothing's too good for you, Bullethead. Well, I appreciate that, fellas, but Bullethead Burke's a fair man. There's a cabin up ahead there. We'll ask one of the local yokels if he can identify one of you and not the other. Come on. Joe wasn't your uncle. Oh, I'm so ashamed, Hoss, but I was afraid he'd really find my uncle, and I was so mad at little Joe for calling me a pickpocket and... Oh, hurry, that's all right. Now everything's all right, honey. What's done's done. What we got to do now is find little Joe. And quick. Well, look at this letter. You see why Buck is really mad. Look at that. That 
Right. Must be a half a dozen roads out of Virginia City. I'm gonna go down on the street and scout around and see if I can find anybody that saw him leaving. Okay. Oh, and, and I'm gonna rent a buggy and go out and check out my Uncle Gideon. Thank goodness he's safe. Hey, that... Shut up! Oh, howdy, neighbor. I take it you're a native of these parts. Uh, why, uh, yes. Oh, good. Uh, maybe you can help me solve a little problem. Oh, well, let me introduce myself. My name's Burke. Some folks call me Bullethead Burke. And I'm a stranger in these parts myself. And I need someone to identify one of the local boys for me, Mr. Uh... That's the real Gideon Flinch. I tell you, Burke, that's Gideon Flinch. I've seen him in the sheriff's office and on the stagecoach. Why don't you shut up? You'll try anything, won't you? Now, what did you say your name was, sir? I, uh, uh, Cranston. Yeah, uh, Homer T. Cranston. Mr. Cranston? That's the name the hotel clerk told me that Flinch used. Uh, that, that's right, Bullethead. This is the man I saw get off the stage this morning. Now we've got three Gideon Flinches to take care of. What difference does it make? One, two, three. The boss said there's nothing too good for Bullethead. All right. Now all you Flinches get into that cabin. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Now, this much I know. One of you cheated me out of $5,000. Now, once and for all, which of you is the real Gideon Flinch? I'm Jake the Weasel. And I, I, I'm, I'm Joe Cartwright. C C Cranston? H Homer T? Somebody coming out there, Bullethead. Well, see who it is. I guess we all know who that is. Let go of the door! Let go of the So you managed to get yourself untied and follow us, huh? All right, sister, now for the last time. Which one of these galoots is your uncle? It's gonna be that way, is it? All right. Now, I'm going to give you people just three minutes to produce the real Gideon Flinch. Me and my boys will step outside while you talk it over. Now, remember, just three minutes. I ain't fooling. Either one of you gets beat up, horse-whipped, and maybe shot, or all three of you. Now, is that clear? I can't let you two take punishment for me. I ought to own up to Bullethead. But I can't. Mm. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Gideon. We'll think of something. Say, how did you all get out here, anyhow? Um, how did we get out here? How did you get out here? Well, how do you think? Horse came back and untied me. The horse knows about this? Yes, I, I told him the truth. I even gave him that letter that Burke wrote to Uncle Gideon. You gave my brother the letter? Yes. And then he must have it on him. You know, I think maybe we can all get out of this. I'm, I'm willing. Oh, anything. Well, this is gonna be good. Hmm, good. You see, my brother's got the letter. Time's just about up, Bulletin. Where'd you get the watch? Oh, this is Flinch's. I figured when you got through with him, he wouldn't be needing it. So you're the real Gideon Flinch. I knew it. No, 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 no. Hold it, Burke. No, we, we, we decided to tell the truth. I'll give you ten seconds. Well, we... See, we, we think this farce has gone on far enough, and... Well, the th three of us decided not to take a beating just to protect the real Gideon Flinch. You mean there's another Gideon Flinch? Four... Four Gideon Flinches. Four Gideon flinches? You see, see, see that, that was part of the plan. <laughs> see, we, we wanted to protect our, our old pal Gideon Flinch, one wonderful guy. And uh, we thought maybe we'd confuse you and then you'd leave town. What kind of flummer are you trying to hand me? And, uh, now, you listen, Burke. Now, I can lead you to the real McCoy. I mean, I mean Flinch. And, and, he's, and he's right back there in town. And, and I can prove it. He's got a letter on him that you wrote to him. Now, am I right or am I right? The U.S. mail does not deliver letters to the wrong people. <laughs> 
this is a trick, I'm going to have your hide flinch or not. Hey, Rocky, you ain't seen little Joe, have you? Gosh, hoss, I ain't seen him since this morning. But my lumbago's yeah, killing yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I know, Rocky. Hey, you didn't see my pipe, did you? There goes one of them. Yeah. I wonder where's the other one. There he is. One and only Gideon Flinch. Boys, bring him in. That's him. If that's really him, Bullethead, looks like you're gonna have your hands full. Well, the bigger they are. Besides, you always got the bulge on a man when he knows that you're right and he's wrong. And if you got him outnumbered. Oh, you better be right about him having my letter in his pocket. Oh, yeah, he's got it. You come with me. Put that thing away. Here. Keep your eye on him. Howdy, stranger. Oh, hi. Flinch. It's the real Gideon Flinch I got you at last. I take it that you're Mr. Bullethead Burke. Now, just so there ain't no mistaken, my name is Horse Cartwright, and you got my little brother, Little Joe. You're Gideon Flinch. Hey, come on. Excuse me. Sure. Hey, come, come on, on Bullethead. Come on. Come on, Bullethead. Come on. Come on. Come on. Miss Flinch. Miss Flinch, that punch didn't hurt you no more than that. Ain't no need in us fighting. Ah, oh, good work, brother. Oh, Hoss, you were magnificent. Please, tell me, which one of you is Gideon Flinch? Confusing, ain't it? <laughs> uh, I, I guess I owe you two a great deal of thanks. Uh, shouldn't we get the sheriff now? It's going to be kind of hard to do. See, the sheriff and the deputy rode out of town this morning looking for a little sneak thief that busted out of their jail named Jake the Weasel. That's me. I keep telling you, I'm Jake the Weasel. I guess he really was Jake the Weasel. I, I want to go back to Chicago. Please, I just got to know, which one of you is Gideon Flinch? Bullethead, this here is the only Gideon Flinch there is or there ever was. Oh, don't let him hurt me. Oh, don't worry, none. He ain't gonna hurt nobody. Well, if you're willing to let bygones be bygones... No, you take my word for it. I don't ever want to see any of you ever again. Hey, uh, now that all the excitement's over and seeing that Garson's is still open, how would you like to have a little late supper with the more charming of the Cartwright clan? Why, well, I'd like that a whole lot. <laughs> If the more charming member would consider taking me. Yes, sirree. It's been a mighty tiring day. I'm plumb tuckered out. <laughs> Me too. This sure has been more exciting than the Alamo. Well... <laughs>
this heat, especially with those chains on them. The animals, boy. Don't deserve no better. You have lunch yet? Yeah. Plus a ten-minute break every hour like your pa wants. He sends you to check on me. Look, my pa's glad to let the territory put a rose for the Ponderosa. He wants to make sure they're treated fair while they're working on our ranch. <laughs> yeah. I'll treat them like little lambs, boy. Tell your pa not to fret. Want a drink? No, not now. Thanks, anyway. It's a uh, nice-looking horse. Yeah, I'm just breaking him in. He's still a little bit nervous. Look at him. Clean clothes, full belly, and a fine animal to take him wherever he wants to go. That Travis. One of these days, I'm going to get him good. Yo, kid, one more word. You do time in the hole. Thanks a lot. For what? For what? For saving my life. Not for you, friend. I just didn't want to see your horse hurt. Now, I ain't going to tell you again. Get on back to work. He will in a minute, Travis, when I get through talking to him. Well, do it quick. Look, what's your name? Kid. Danny Kid. Now, my name's Joe Cartwright. I wish there was some way I could repay you. You want to repay me, huh? <laughs> well, that's nice. That's that's real nice. Just what do you think you can do for me? Or you just try me. All right, friend. There is something you can do. Get these off of me. I appreciated the way you treated our prisoners when they were working on the road through the Ponderosa, but I think it's carrying it a little too far to want to free somebody like Danny Kidd. Well, Warden, we, we said we'd, we wanted to try and free him. And this letter from the governor is pretty good trying. You know anything about the prisoner? Only that he saved my life. Bring him in here. We'll let him tell you about himself, and then you tell me if you still want to see him go free. You know why you're here? No. There's Mr. Ben Cartwright and his sons at the Ponderosa Ranch. They want to see you turned loose. I have a letter here from the governor granting you an amnesty. But it also needs my signature. You think I should turn you loose? You'll do what you want to do, Warden. How old are you, son? 23. How long have you been here? 10 years. Since you was 13? What'd you do? I stabbed somebody with a fork. 
Why? Well, he tried to steal my apple pie. How often do you get dessert with your meals? Almost every night. At the orphanage, they gave it to us once a month. Makes sense to you now? When did you lose your parents? I was five years old. You've been confined to state institutions all this time? That's right, Mr. Cartwright, but I don't call it confined. I, I call it caged. Warden, don't you think he's been punished enough? I understand what you're saying, but this is a prison, not a school. If I had released him, he'd been back inside of these walls in less than a week. He has no trade, no one he can turn to. He has now. Do you know what you're letting yourself in for? He's like a wild animal. He knows nothing of honesty, decency. He may even turn on you, do you terrible harm. You sign that amnesty, Warden. He'll be my responsibility. You'll be released to Joseph Cartwright. Behave yourself for one year and you'll get a complete pardon. But get one inch out of line and you'll spend the rest of your days behind bars. Do you understand? I understand. You'll leave with the Cartwrights. Just a minute, kid. I got your possessions. All we found on you when you came here ten years ago. Hard case. Not even a thank you. Well, gentlemen, he's all yours. I wish you luck. Thank you very much, Warden, for everything. Thank you. I'll you'll excuse me. Well, little brother, it looks like you've cut yourself out quite a job. Yeah. Joseph, you'll be riding back to the ranch alone with Danny. Hans and I promised Mr. Carter we'd find him a prize seed bowl. Oh, and remind Adam about the party for Carter. All right, Pa. Well, ain't no look. Look, and I want you to worry. Danny and I are going to get along real fine. I hope so. I certainly hope so. You've taken on a big responsibility, son. I know that, sir. Danny? I'm sorry. I don't like for anybody to come up behind me quietly. I'll remember that next time. Was there anything wrong? No, no. I couldn't sleep. Too many things to think about. Hey, you want to talk about it? The warden called me an animal. You want to know what an animal thinks about the first night out of the cage? Yeah, I'd like to hear it. What do you see out there? I don't know that I 
crime scene before. You know what you don't see? Walls. Wherever you look, no walls. As long as I can remember, I always looked at a wall, standing up, lying down. Always there was a wall in front of me. They pressed you in, made you a small little man. About time you were getting here, we'd about given you up for lost. We're going a couple of days and everybody starts to panic. The only thing that's gonna panic around here is you when you find out how your back chores have piled up. Haven't you been doing my work for me? No. Adam, this is Danny Kidd. Danny, this is my older brother. Nice to know you. I do. Well, everything looks about the same. Well, they are, except for one thing. Now, see what I tell you? What's the matter, somebody steal a South 40? No, it's Concho. Concho, what's wrong with him? He's down. Happened this morning. Tried to get him up on his feet, but he couldn't make it. It's the horse I was riding out by the bridge. Where is he now? In the barn. Let's go. Danny, come on. That's yeah, pretty bad. The veins are all distended. The doctor looked at him this morning. He doesn't feel anything can save him. You gonna kill him? I suppose we'll have to. Why not give him a chance? We don't like to kill animals, Danny. Doesn't seem like we have any choice. Well, maybe not, but uh, I'd like to try. You ever worked on sick horses? At prison. I worked with the stock. I learned a little. It's going to take more than a little learning to save this animal. I'll do what you can. Joe? Hmm? If I cure him, can I ride him? If you cure him, you can have him. Could you use some help? Yeah, I could use a little. All right, where do we begin? Well, uh, a horse gets down, his insides stop working. First thing we gotta do is get him to his feet. <laughs> That's not gonna be an easy job. You got a block and tackle and a belly band? Yeah, we got one someplace. Mm -hmm. well, we'll uh, hook it up to that beam up there, pull him to his feet, give him enough support so he can stand, and then we'll heat up some blankets and uh, keep him warm. The rest is up to him. All right, let's get to work. So far, so good. 
You got a kettle big enough to boil blankets in? Yeah, I'm back. Let's bring it in here. Right. How long do we keep this up? Till he gets well or dies. You know, I think he's gonna be all right. I know he's gonna be all right. Hey, mind if I ask you a question? Ask away. I've seen men work hard for something they want. I've never seen anybody work like you. Why is it so important? Those clothes you're wearing, they're yours? These? Sure they are. That gun you got, it belonged to you? Yeah. Fact is, everything you have belongs to you. Is that right? I guess so. Well, the only thing I remember that belonged to me was this. I was five years old. After that, everything I got was hand-downs and cast-offs. It was given to me, but it was never mine. Nothing was ever mine again, until now. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I guess it does. How's the work going? Fine. Except for getting these new duds dirty. Well, they fit pretty good. How's your horse? Oh, he's all right. He's doing just fine. Hey, look, we're having a party up at the house tonight for old man Carter. He's the one who sent horse and pa out after the bull. You gonna be there? You asking? Yeah, I'm asking. I'll be there. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay. Tell her, give a man a chance. Bob Stevens, you're one good-looking cowboy. No question about it. You're one loud cowboy, that's for sure. Well, now that's confidence. A man needs confidence to make the pretties noticing, and I'm loaded with it. You ready for tonight's doings? Much as I'll ever be. Now, you just keep an eye on yours truly. Do what he does, and you'll get a pretty for yourself. I'll try to remember that. Hey, tell her, you know what I need to set me off? One of them nice, bright neckerchiefs. Why, to hide the dirt? Yes, there's something with color in it. A real eye catcher. You got a tie, tell her? No, anything I got be too plain for you. Well, now, somebody around here ought to have a good one. Maybe that new guy. Maybe he's got a flashy one I could borrow. Well, from what I've seen, he don't even have a plain one. Don't look to have much anything. I'll take a look. Well, look a here. <laughs> now, what's that? Looks like some kind of kid's toy or something, don't it? What do you know? Man his age playing with stuff like that. Put it down. I said, put it down. 
All right, all right. Don't be so touchy about it. I wasn't doing no harm. I was just looking for a neckerchief. You got a nice flashy one I could borrow? No. Not even a little old plain one? Well, you must have got some pretty poor wages at your last job. You know where I come from? Still, even in prison, you must have got something. I did. Yeah, what? An education. They taught me not to be a loudmouth. Now listen, Hard Keys, you've been walking around with a chip on your shoulder ever since you got here. A fella that plays with dolls can't be so tough. Well, now let's see how they taught you to fight in that prison. I'm not gonna fight you. What's the matter, you yeller? Because you're not worth going back to jail for. Don't push your luck. Ah, uh, he's full of air. <laughs> Come on, let's go find them pretties. Of checking up on Concho. Oh, I'd like you to meet Ann Carter, and this is my friend Danny Kidd. Hello, Danny. You know, little Joe's been singing your praises all night. Hey, look, you, uh, you keep an eye on her for me. I want to talk to her father. He just bought a big herd from us. I want to make sure he's having a good time. You certainly are a quiet one. No wonder I hadn't heard about you. Well, I'm supposed to know all the boys for 50 miles around. Well, I, uh... I haven't been around here too long. That's a shame. But uh, I hope you'll stay around, because I think I like you, Danny Kid. Oh, I do declare. I think you're blushing. Well, I'm not, not too uh, good at socializing with girls. I don't believe that. But I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll teach you about socializing with girls. Miss Carter. We'll start with conversation later. Put your arm around me. What's that? Well, put your arm around me. For dancing, silly. Oh. Hey, look at that, Bob. You see what I see? Yeah, I see it. Looks like they taught that old boy lots of things in prison. Oh, he's talking to a girl. But Ann Carter happens to be the prettiest girl here. She's talking to him, not you. Well, I could cut him out like a calf in a corner. Well, how come you're still standing here while she's dancing with him? You know, you ain't smart, Teller. Of course, you ask questions. And when you're smart, you got answers. Oh, that's smart boy. What's the answer? Well, look, so I go cut him out. What happens? He just comes back later. So? So a smart man cuts him out permanent. It's very nice to see old friends again, isn't it? It's something we should do more often. I think it was very nice of Ben to have this party Excuse for us. Excuse me, he... folks. Could I have a talk with you, Mr. Carter? Well, of course, Bob. Excuse me just a moment. What is it, son? Well, sir, if I were the father of a pretty girl like Ann, I'd be more careful with the type man she's seen with. Say what you have to say. What I'm saying is... He's an ex-convict. Are you 
positive about this? We all know about it, Mr. Carter. Thank you, gentlemen. Ann? Dad, this is Danny Kidd. Danny, this is my father. Get your things. We're leaving. I was just beginning to have a good time. Don't question me. Do as I say. Is there something wrong, Mr. Carter? Ann and I are leaving, and right now. I don't understand. Well, I can see why the Ponderosa might hire an ex-convict. But I can't understand how you could allow him to entertain my daughter. No, we didn't intend to keep it a secret. Just didn't think that tonight was the right time to talk about it. When my daughter's well, any time's the right time. Good night, gentlemen. Mr. Carter gets hot too easy. He didn't mean it. We're sorry this happened. I'd like to find out who did it. I'm about to. Just a minute. Let us take care of this. Did one of you tell Mr. Carter about Danny? You fighting his battles for him? I fight my own battles. No, not here, so. not now. We've got guests in the house. Let's try to remember it. All right, now which one of you told Mr. Carter about Danny? Well, you know, when old Bob makes up his mind, it's kind of hard to get him to change it. Well, both of you get back to the bunkhouse. Well, I don't take orders from you. Look here, it was your dad that hired us, not you two. Pack your gear. I'll have your wages ready in 10 minutes. Might be we'll meet up sometime. Settle our differences. I think we better get back to our guests. All right, come on, everybody, let's dance. Yeah. Get you some punch. Good night, Betty. Good night, Bob. Oh, boy, am I glad that's over. Well, I'm for bed. How about you guys? Oh, I think I'll have a look at Concho. Yeah, I'll go with you. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take it easy, Al. Good night. Let's get a drink. Okay. You think you can take him? Just watch me. You want it real bad, don't you? That's what I'm here for, little friend. And I figure I can handle you, too. Oh, well, you're gonna have to, tell her. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? I'm not gonna fight you, friend. I'm gonna kill you. with you? You're trying to kill him? That's a reason for fighting, isn't it? No, it isn't. Stevens was sore, but he didn't want to kill you. In prison, you got a man down, you made sure he stayed down. If you didn't, he'd get you. A week, a month, a year, time didn't matter. One day you turn your back and he'd get you. Maybe that's the way it is in prison, but it doesn't work that way on the outside. Now, you were wrong, real wrong. I make a habit of being wrong. Maybe you were wrong in taking me out of that cage. When I think I'm wrong, I'll tell you.
Yeah, welcome home, Pa. Adam said you wanted to see me. Yes, I do. Understand you had a little trouble here last night. Yeah, well, if, uh, if you mean that trouble with Mr. Carter, that was... Hmm. No, I don't mean the trouble with Mr. Carter. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I saw Mr. Carter in Virginia City earlier today. Naturally, he was concerned for Anne, but he understood what we were, you know, what we were trying to do. Now, I was referring to the, uh, the trouble that came later. Oh, hell. Yeah. You, you must be talking about the fight. Well, that wasn't anything. We settled that. Well, Adam tells me that uh, Danny tried to kill Bob Stevens. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, why? Did, uh, did, did Bob provoke him so much that he had to try to kill him? Well, maybe Danny thought he did. Do you think he did? No. No, not enough to kill him. Well, what do you intend doing about it? I wish I knew. Joseph. Now, you know you have the power to send her back to prison, if that's what you want to do. Look, Pa, we knew it wasn't going to be easy with Danny. He's so used to being inside, in that cage, where, where people feel it's kill or be killed. It's just hard for him to get used to being with people on the outside, that's all. And you think you can get him used to being with people on the outside? Yes, I think so. I think it's going to take time, but I think I can do it. It's quite a responsibility kind of responsibility you can't just put on and take off like a suit of clothes. Once you accept it, it becomes part of you. Something you have to live with all your life. You understand that? Yes, sir, I understand that. Don't look so fierce. I only wanted to surprise you. What is this, anyhow? Well, it's... It's only something I carry around for luck. A doll. Seems to me a grown-up man should have. Grown-up things. Miss Carter, I don't think your dad's gonna like you being out here. My father. Papa's looking at that prize bull Mr. Cartwright brought back for him. That's all he's thinking about. What are you thinking about, Mr. Kidd? Is it true you spent all those years in jail? It's true. What was it like? If you got about ten years, I'll give you a day-by-day -day account of it. No wonder you were so awkward and shy. I bet I was the first girl you were ever with. That's right. And I bet you've never held a girl in your arms or kissed her. No, Miss Carter. I've never kissed a girl. I think I'd like to be the first. Please, stay away from me. Never had to throw myself at a man before. I've always had to push them away. You don't tell me you're afraid, Mr. Kidd. No, I'm not afraid. I promise not to struggle. about women, do you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had no right to do that. Hey, hey what happened?
Why did you have to do it? Why did you have to prove everybody else is right and I'm wrong? You just wouldn't let me help you, would you? All right, I guess I am wrong. And now I'm going to take you back. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Pack your things. We're going to leave now. Sure, friend. Whatever you say. Welcome back. How long have I been out? About an hour. Hey, it's hard. Yeah. Is he going? Yeah, he's gone. Anne came out to the pasture. She was pretty upset. Man, did she tell you what happened? Yeah. Said it was all her fault. She said it was her fault. She admitted she'd been teasing him pretty badly. Well, you know how she is. You're always set to go off half-cocked about hearing things out, ain't you, little brother? I should have known better. Too bad Danny isn't around to hear it. Yeah, we're gonna have to find him. There's no telling what he'll do now. Pa, let me go after him. He'll listen to me. Pa, you gotta let me go. I don't have to do anything. Now, from here on in, we're in this thing together. Is that understood? And we'll get an early start. He doesn't know this country too well, so it shouldn't be too hard to find him. Come on, let's get you to bed. I just... Let me sit here for a while. Right? You'll be all right. Half a cow. Right. Put off that bad of money. Wake up, little Joe. The one in your room, boy. I figured he's. You don't reckon. Are the horses ready? Yeah. Let's go. Never make it. Well, was I that easy to follow? Just like a herd of cows. I never had much practice. <sighs> what happens now? We go back. To the ranch, or...? It's not up to me now. The family will have to decide. But we know the truth about you and Ann. Do you think that'll make a difference? Yeah, I think so. Go find
I should have killed you back at the barn. Well, why didn't you? I let you live. I figured you'd let me live. But it didn't work out that way. Why don't you go ahead and use it, Danny? Why don't you go ahead and kill me? I don't know. You wanna know why? Because you're not an animal. You've had to live like an animal for a long time, but, but you're not an animal. I'm sure you made some mistakes. You're gonna make a lot more mistakes. But you got friends to stick by you now. If you just let him. You mean proving myself to everybody I meet from now on? I'd rather go back to the cage. man has to make his own decisions. If you don't think we'll treat you fair, keep right on going the way you were. Joseph, sometimes you make me very angry. Sorry, Pa. I did what I figured I had to do. Did you find him? Yeah, I found him. You can tell that by looking at his face. Where you got him tied up, Joe? I don't have him tied up. I let him go. Well, that was pretty foolish, too, wasn't it? No, I don't think so. How come? Look, all his life, he's had people doing his thinking for him, telling him what to do. It was exactly the same with us. So I decided to let him make his decision himself. He had one more year to prove himself, and then he'd be on his own. But he couldn't even wait out that one year. So, son, you're gonna ride back to the ranch, and we're gonna find him. Now, look, Pa, get... Joseph! I'm tired, and I'm hungry, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Now, get going. Hey, hey, Paul. Look there. Hey, Joe! Wait a minute! I knew it, Pa. I knew it. It's kind of wonderful, Joseph. No matter how old a man gets, he can always learn something new. I offer no excuses, Mr. Cartwright, and I'll accept any decision you hand down. Well, Danny, I noticed when you left, your chores were only half done. Try to get them finished before supper. Well, Joe, uh, I believe this belongs to you. Me and my nag will race you and that flea bag back to the ranch. All right.
go to very well with the young man. What do you mean, Paul? Oh, they have something that all the money in the world can't buy. It's called friendship. <laughs> 